So for me, cloud computing is not having to own and operate computers. You just, you just access them like electricity. It's utility computing. In the end, what you want to do is you want to build stuff using computers. You don't want to spend a lot of time and energy running the computers, right? And uh, I don't know, in a, in, a, in a former life, I kind of thought that was fun. But I don't want to be a sysadmin anymore, and I don't want to rack things, and I don't want to deal with that, right? I just want to have infrastructure that I can use to do the things I want to do. I also want it to be what's called elastic, which is to say uh, when I need more of it, I can have more of it. When I need less of it, I can have less of it, and that, that all happens in a fluid and automatic way. I'm not sure it's going to be so hard to make the transition because enterprises are already engaged in a huge push to virtualize their infrastructure. So that's a major step in the direction of cloud computing and really gets people, I think, into the mindset and in many ways already technically uh, prepared for the move to the cloud. So uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't really see it as being disruptive. I see it as being evolutionary. The biggest thing from my point of view is that something that I build on a cloud platform is intrinsically available to the whole world not necessarily available, right? In other words, if I build something inside the firewall, it's available to the people inside my firewall. And if I then want to expose that more widely, it's hard to do. Um, you know, if I start from the other end and I build it out in the cloud, you know, then I can lock down parts of it so people won't be able to see them or get to them. But um, the, you sort of flip the default, right? And so you're building a service which is at least potentially accessible rather easily to potentially anyone on the web. And so that, I think, is particularly interesting, or should be, to governments um, as they start to build out infrastructure for engagement with you know, citizens and with the rest of the world. So I don't know. It's probably 15 years since I built my first web application. And it was really a life-changing kind of a thing to realize that uh, I, a lone individual developer, could stand something up that could be used by people I never met, could be used by larger numbers of people than I ever imagined I would have any contact with. And uh, you know, until fairly recently, it hasn't been so easy to have that experience. Um, and it hasn't been, therefore, so easy for a person to, to the way I think about it is that, is that that ability to spin up a service in the cloud enables you to be a super empowered developer. Right. And so in my case, I'm working on a service. It's called uh, the Elm City Project. And it's, uh, it's about calendar aggregation. And I don't know how big this thing is going to get, but in principle, it could get very big. Right? It could ultimately serve hundreds or thousands of cities or, or towns, and within them, you know, many people in each place. Um, and you know, I, can, I can spin up you know, under the umbrella of this thing potentially all of these instances that other people can use to support still other people. And I'm just one guy, right? I'm just one guy behind this thing. And, uh, and so I, I can be a super empowered individual. And so there's this, this extraordinary leverage, which has always been kind of implicit in the architecture of the web. But this, um, this really brings it within reach of, of more people than ever before.